Welcome to episode five of Building Christophsis. I've got a couple of important updates to share with you guys here, so you probably don't wanna skip out on this intro. To start with, this is probably gonna be the final update episode in this series which might seem kind of weird because there's only been five updates, but I've been trying to pack a lot of content into each episode for you guys to keep things interesting. I decided not to put out a video last week so I could really focus on things and I got a ton of building progress done, which is good because my deadline is approaching quickly. For those of you who've been following along, you probably already know this, but if you're new here, I'm gonna be bringing this entire build with me to Brickworld Chicago this year. That means that not only do I have to finish the mock in time, but I also have to figure out how I'm going to transport this entire thing without doing some serious damage damage to the build. I'm going to be displaying this build with Empire Lug at Brickworld, so if you guys want to come and stop by and see the build in person, or if you just want to chat with me, now you know where to find me. Now that we have all that stuff out of the way, let's take a look at some of the progress that's been made. My main priority for this update was to make sure that I could get the skyscrapers fully completed. My parents were in town and they got together with my sister and worked on building a ton of different floors for the skyscrapers, which was super helpful. The fact that people were able to help me get through such a repetitive building task meant that I was really able to start speaking speeding things up. Once a number of the floors for the skyscrapers were finished being built, it was time to get into installing some more lighting. I ordered some more components from Light My Bricks and started getting to work. The other thing that I needed to work on was building the large crystal structures that we see on the sides of the buildings in Christophsis. My initial plan was to just kind of build some of these and have them hanging off the sides of buildings or standing on the ground, but as I've gotten further into this, I've realized that I wanted to actually install them in the sides of the buildings. So with each floor that I added to a building, I added support layers of plates so that everything could be stuck together properly. The first building that I wanted to finish was the shortest one on the left hand side of the build. I also needed to build in some more bridge detailing on the right hand side of the building where the explosion had taken place. I worked on including as much detail as possible in this small little bridge section so that the explosion could look at least somewhat believable. After I finished that up I moved on to creating the exposed area of flooring for the top of the building. I had to make a large plate section that could sit on top of the building and not be supported from the underside because I didn't have any interior to these buildings. This meant that things had to be pretty thick, so I ended up using some large Technic brick plates to create a solid structure underneath the flooring. I then moved on to creating a perimeter in the shape of a hexagon and then moved on to tiling things and building in some rubble detail. Once I got that top floor installed, I worked on creating a little bit more detail with destruction from the glass and the crystals on the floor, and then I built up around the edges of things to make it look nice and destroyed. Overall, I think this section of the build turned out looking really nice. I'm especially a fan of how the broken glass turned out, I think it looks really believable. After completing the building on the left, I moved on to the center skyscraper. My plan was to have large crystal structures on both sides of this building. I used inverted slopes to slant the crystal structures towards the inside of the building. And then as I added each layer of flooring, I tied in the crystals to the center of the build using plates. Once I got everything up to its final height, it was time to start working on the roof for the building. I decided it would be easiest to build both roofs at the same time for this building and the one on the right hand side of the build. I had a general idea for what I wanted this to look like, but it definitely took me a lot longer than I expected to actually build the thing. I used a similar structure for these roofs as what I used for the flooring on the other building. I incorporated those Technic brick plates again to give everything a solid foundation, and I used a bunch of inverted 1x2 curved slopes to tie everything together. These things are super hard to take apart, so I figured they would add a good level of stability to things. It's hard to see in these clips, but I was messing with wiring the entire time I was working on building up these skyscrapers. I had to make sure I was getting power to the top of the building so that I could work on making the spotlights that I was planning on having to light up the rest of the build. Once I got the roof added onto the center skyscraper, Alec came over and he helped me out with topping off the crystal structures. I tried going for a couple of different designs here to give some variation and interest to the design. And those things you see hanging off the front of the building are the spotlights I was talking about earlier. After finishing up the center building, I moved on to the final skyscraper on the right hand side of the build. I continued to use the same technique of stacking floors and adding in plates to tie the crystal structure into the side of the building. As things got taller and taller, I actually had to climb up on top of the table to finish off the crystal structure on the back side of the building. Next I moved on to making sure all of my wiring was squared away and I started working on building a couple more spotlights. The whole purpose of these spotlights coming off the front side of the building is to illuminate the battle on the ground. This was the best place that I could think of to put this lighting without it looking super out of place or blocking parts of the battle from the front. I also made a spotlight on the left hand side of the building to point upwards towards the gunship that I was planning on mounting on top of the skyscraper. I was definitely a little bit nervous at first to get this gunship mounted on top of the building, but once I built up the structure, it was feeling really sturdy and I thought it looked awesome. Now that all the buildings are complete, it was time to work on the final crystal structures on the ground. 
I knew that I wanted to tile off all of these gray base plates, but I wanted to start by finishing off the crystal structures that were coming up from the floor. I started off on the right hand side of the build with this super tall crystal structure that just sort of sits up right against the side of the building. Again, I tried incorporating a couple of different angles to make it look somewhat organic. Next, I worked on tiling off the entire 48 by 48 stud gray base plate on the right hand side of the build. I wanted to try making a bunch of different types of crystals to give a sort of organic look to the landscape while staying true to the general look of the source material. After I got that side done, I moved on to the center of the build where I ended up doing a similar thing and just kept tiling away and building different crystal structures. I've been really looking forward to getting to this part of the build because covering up all those studs with with tiles is super satisfying. I was generally feeling pretty good at the beginning of this build with picking this blue color to represent the crystals, but as time went on I was really actually feeling a little bit unsure about my decision here. After getting everything tiled off though and adding in all these crystal structures, I think this blue color adds some really nice contrast to things. It's not exactly a color that you see used very much, if at all, in Star Wars builds, but I think it really pops in this case. The next thing on my list to get working on was parting together an NRN99 tank drawer also known as a snail tank. I bought the instructions for this model off of Brick Vault because I knew that I wanted to include at least one of these in the mock. I was actually able to pull quite a few parts together for this build from my own parts collection, so it didn't end up being that expensive of a build. I placed a couple of BrickLink orders, and a few days later, all of my parts had arrived. I love the design of this tank, and I'm super happy that it's minifig scale because it matches together with everything else that I've used so far in the mock. It's super detailed, it's a sturdy build, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. And just like all the other models that I've bought off of Brick Vault, this uses some really clever building techniques. If you want to build this tank for yourself or you're interested in other minifigure scale Star Wars models, you can use my code FIREBIRD15 to get 15% off your next Brick Vault purchase. I've been super happy with all the models that I bought from them and I can't recommend them enough. The next thing on my list to build was an Octopara droid. I ordered parts from a number of different BrickLink stores to get everything I needed to make this droid. One of the stores had a couple of the Phase 1 clones from last year in stock so I picked those guys up so I can use them in the build. I worked on getting all of my BrickLink Link orders sorted into these trays and I started building. This was a pretty straightforward build and it didn't take too long to get everything done. This Octopara droid is also minifig scale, so again, it fits in perfectly with everything else in the mock. I want to give a shout out to Phoenix Building Studios for sending me the instructions to this model for free. He's made a really cool model here, so I'm going to leave a link to the instructions down in the description of this video so you guys can go pick them up if you want to build this for yourself. Hope you guys enjoyed this progress update. I'm going to be releasing a couple of different videos around the finale of this mock. Of course, I'll be doing a full walkthrough and cinematic so you guys can see all the details within the build. I'm also planning on doing a full build time lapse video where I take all the time lapses that I've filmed over the entirety of this build, stick them into one video, and then there'll be some extra footage that you guys won't see in the updates that's coming over the next few days as I finish things up. I really like the videos that David from Solid Brick Studios has been doing recently where he kind of takes everything that he filmed within a mock series and packages it all together into one nice short video. I think it's especially good for people who haven't followed along for the entire series. So this will kind of be my version of that. I have a couple other video ideas that I'm not fully committed to yet, but we'll see what else comes out of this. Check out one of these videos on screen here to see some of my other mocks and subscribe so you don't miss out on the finale. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I hope you have a good one.